decades ago, my next guest started their longest running wrestling talk show in the history of mankind. And I'm not talking about Mick Foley. I'm talking about Len Kaplan and Ed Whitty, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. 30 years you've been doing this production right now. Yes. My only question is, what keeps you going? Well, what keeps us going, Ed? I guess a love for the show, more, uh, more of a content these days. Uh, I wish we were 20 years ago, to be honest with you. Now, of course, your program is about the sport of professional wrestling Absolutely. out there. And you guys were uh, the innovators, really. Like I said, 30 years ago, no one else was actually doing a television t talk show about professional wrestling. And a uh, little, little cat out of the bag. I got my start in television on your show when I moved here from Las Vegas. I didn't get to host it or anything or do any fun stuff like that. I had to got the answer, the phones, because you guys did live call-ins, and you had some of the strangest human beings, other than the ones at the end of the couch, they used to call you and ask questions about professional wrestling. Now, do you remember so many wacky questions that some of these people used to call and ask you? Yes, I remember they asked the dungeon master to uh, beat uh, Len and I up. Well, I yeah. think that was me making the phone call yeah, from, that the, probably uh, was. from the uh, operating booth out there. Yeah. Now, Impress us here. What professional wrestlers have you had on your program that you've interviewed? Well, we've had Bruno San Martino. We've had Jake the Snake on location, Bret Hart on location, Don Morocco in the studio, the fabulous Moolah. And you interviewed the greatest intercontinental heavyweight champion of all time, a oh, guy I'm... who has a long sideburns and his hair slicked back. Absolutely. The honky-tonk man out there. Honky-tonk <clears throat> man, locally at the Stackpole Field. I, I wasn't there for that yes. one. Unbelievable. Down. You know, yeah. Colonel, you know, Colonel, you were actually a professional wrestler at one point in time in your career. That's correct. How many cheers have you been hit with on the top of your head? About uh, 50 of them. 50 of them. Rumor is you've been hit so many times, the top of your head smells like ass. <laughs> Can I tell you... The weirdest story about wrestling talk. Sure, the weirdest story about wrestling yes. talk. Go right ahead. Jake the Snake. We were on location somewhere at a show. Yep. And we met Jake the Snake. This is about 15, 20 years ago. And I went backstage to try to get him to interview. And I had recently interacted with his father. So I thought that would be a good opening line. Hey, I know your father and he was very nice to me. He just went off on me, and he had a snake, a defanged snake, and he sicked the snake on me. I had the sweater on. I got all sp snake spit all over my sweater. <laughs> and um, you than me. Then later on, later on, that wasn't the interview. That was just backstage. Later on, I didn't want to leave without interviewing Jake the Snake. So I actually went back there. I don't know. I was kind of insane. Went back and asked him again, and he actually did the interview. Now, Ed and I both remembered the incident with the snake, but we thought, up until we saw the tape, like 20 years later, yep. we thought that the snake bite was on camera. And we looked and we looked and, and we just both remembered it very weirdly. Yeah. Isn't that it's a strange? fascinating story, Len, down there. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like uh, <laughs> Colonel's story down there about his, uh, well, that's a different story for a different time. Uh, <laughs> but Jake the Snake Roberts and all the one. Now, what is, who's the ultimate person that you ever want to have on a program that you haven't had? Oh, that's easy. The immortal Hulk Hogan, of course. The immortal Hulk Hogan. Absolutely. Not me. The, uh, the well, <laughs> yeah, we would love to have you the on. Don't Absolutely. forget, I was one of the Druids for The Undertaker at WrestleMania yes. 14. Yes, 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 you were. I was. That's, that's, the, that's a shoot out there for those wrestling terminology fans <laughs> out there. Now, you have a belt around your waist right yes. now. That is a World Tag, tag Team Championship? World Tag Team, ECW. Now, that, you have a, a, that's a story in itself, how you got that belt. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, when you do stupid things, sometimes you get rewarded. Um, Obviously, I, you co host Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, I had had an industrial accident uh, many years ago, 2002, um, and broke a lot of bones and was out of work and didn't do the show for a little while. And uh, Balls Mahoney was a guest on our show. The late Balls Mahoney. The late Balls Mahoney, yes, sadly. Um, and he was, I, he had heard about the story somehow, either through Leonard Kaplan or, or, or others. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he gave me his tag team title belt. And uh, he wrote a nice little something on the back for me. So, so that's kind of good. A, that's a memento yeah. that you're oh, never going to give away, right? Never. We're not going to see that showing up on eBay. Never be on morning, eBay. Right? No way. Unbelievable. Now, yeah. you think you're going to be doing this show 30 years from now? Yeah. <laughs> well, not 30 years from now, but uh, probably we'll still be doing it in some form or another. We're, yeah. we're playing around with the idea of podcasting. Who does it? Everybody does podcasts. Yeah, and, uh, We're a little late to the game on that you, one. you kind of gave us that idea, TC. Yeah, because I was tired of looking at you. That's why. <laughs> <clears throat> what you going to do when wrestling talk runs wild?
on you, brother.